Okay, the question is uh, to show the connection between contact, feeling, and? Uh, between contact, feeling, and craving. Contact, feeling, and craving, yeah. So surely contact is uh, the two kinds of contact they are called uh, designation contact and impingement contact impingement contact is the contact uh, directly impish in our consciousness the mind designation contact is through the eyes ears nose tongue body and mind when the when objects are in front of the eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind, then consciousness arises, and then one of these, the, the designation contact arises through the eye, ear, nose, tongue, and body, and mind. When designation contact arises, it immediately contact the mind, that's called impingement contact. As soon as mind is uh, triggered or uh, affected by the contact, then uh, it triggers desire according to our previous conditioning. If the object happens to be pleasant, the pleasantness actually is not in the object. Object is just there. And uh, previously we have uh, appreciated the object, uh, enjoyed the object. That's called Nandi Raga. Nandi Raga. Nandi means enjoy. Enjoyment. Raga means attachment. We have only conditioned our mind previously uh, to appreciate that object and then we, then desire arises, nandi arises, nandi means desire, enjoyment, and raga means attachment. This is how when uh, contact, feeling arises, uh, consciousness arises. Consciousness arises, and uh, uh, contact arises, and then we will uh, see uh, the whole uh, mechanism taking place. Okay. Recording in progress. Um, Monte, did you just? Monte, did you just... <laughs> yes. Okay. So let me hang up the the phone. Can't, um... Yes. You can hear me, right? Yes. Uh, just give us one second to start to. Um... Okay, the screen is sharing. Okay. Okay. I think we're you're sharing your screen right now, Bante. So yeah. that's what we are saying. Um, yeah. You 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 can talk. You can ask questions. Okay. Can you hear me, Bante? I can hear you. Yes, very well. Okay. Let me. Um move to the next question and yeah. uh, the next question is about contemplating the elements within meditation and also when you're outside of formal meditation and the question is if this practice um in, from 
in meditation or out of meditation does it bring us closer to equanimity when we have for example feelings of resentment that can arise does this uh contemplation of the of the element help to to cool uh negative sentiments such as ill will uh could you repeat the question it was not very clear to me okay the question is about contemplating the elements what we talked about yesterday the contemplation of the elements mm -hmm. in meditation but also outside of meditation in daily life and the question is does this practice help us to gain equanimity when we have ill will or negative feelings do we gain equanimity by this contemplation of the elements meditation yes you can gain equanimity whether you are in meditation sitting or walking and so on or if you remain to be mindful all the time uh, you will have a, uh, equanimous feeling especially when we talk about uh, equanimity, equ equanimous feeling, uh, the highest uh, level of equanimous, equanimous feeling arises when one attains uh, enlightenment, becomes an arahant. Before that, we can condition our mind to experience that equanimity. So our ordinary life before attaining enlightenment we maintain this uh, equanimous feeling uh, because we 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 know from our in during meditation we know every element all the six elements internal and external four elements then uh, and five elements Akasa, including Akasa, uh, earth element, air element, water element, fire element, and uh, space element. These are, you can find externally as well as internally. But one more element you don't find externally, that is the consciousness element that arises in the mind. So we train these six elements to see that whether it is external or internal, they are with, they are not mine, nor are they uh, myself. I am not them. They are not myself. I mean, Pali we say ne tangmau ne swamasmi ne swatta. They are uh, not mine. I am not them no other myself so we have already trained the mind during meditation and then when you get out of meditation uh, since we have already trained the mind to see this in this way uh, your mind immediately switch on to that trend that way of thinking but Equanimity does not arise in full force until you attain full liberation of craving. Eta mama means this is mine, means craving. Whenever we say this is mine, craving is there behind that in this thought. When we say I am this, conceit is there. When you say, this is myself, then we have a, a notion of self in our mind. All this uh, we have until we attain full enlightenment. Even uh, anagami, that is the third level of enlightenment, even that person has the notion of I am. You remember there is a very famous discourse in uh, uh, Sangyutta Nikaya. It is called Kemaka Sutta. Venerable Kemaka had attained Anagami level. 
and still he had the notion of I am. So he uh, reversed to return to uh, anicca, dukkha, anatta of all the elements, all the elements. In fact, there are uh, 18 elements. What are the 18 elements? I, uh, the chakku dhatu, rupa dhatu, chakku vinyana dhatu. Uh, I elements, form elements, I consciousness elements. Ear elements, sound elements, ear consciousness elements. Nose elements, smell elements, nose consciousness element. Tongue element, taste element, tongue consciousness element. Body element, contact element, and body consciousness elements. Mind elements, mind object elements, and mind consciousness elements. Therefore, there are 18 elements. So the one, when Venerable Khemaka, uh, began to reflect on these 18 elements, then only his notion of self totally vanished and attained full enlightenment. After attaining enlightenment, when his senses come in contact with sensory objects, only equanimous feeling arises in that person with a man or woman. And therefore, during meditation we train, out of meditation we experience to some, them to some extent. But after attain, overcoming all our fetters and attain full enlightenment and become an arad, then it works in full force. And then equanimity remains all the time. An arahant will see an object, but it limits only to seeing. That is why in uh, various places like Daruchiri, uh, Bahi, uh, Daruchiri, Sutta and so forth, Ditte, Ditte Mattang. Seeing should be limited only to seeing. Nothing beyond that. Hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, and mental object should be limited only to that particular function. There is another discourse in Angutrinikai called Kalakarama Sutta. Even there, Buddha mentioned this in a very, very clear way. So, you have to understand uh, Senses, sensory object, contact and feeling arises in uh, arahants and non-arahants, in meditation, out of meditation, difference between ordinary person who has not attained full enlightenment and one who has attained full enlightenment is that ordinary people have don't have the full equanimity in full force, but one who has attained full enlightenment, his equanimity is complete. He always, because that is why an arahant cannot commit karma, cannot, does, does not commit karma. They don't commit karma because they don't have eye consciousness, mind consciousness, my self-consciousness. Okay? Yes. Uh, the next question, Bhante, is um, speaking of the elements uh, yesterday, the fire, earth, water, wind, and space. Uh, the person understands that this insight is to be applied to each one of the elements as this is not mine, I am not this, this is not myself. Yeah. And the question is, is this insight also to be applied to the six element consciousness? 
Yeah, this must be applied to six mind, six kinds of consciousness. Eye consciousness, ear consciousness, and so forth. This should be applied to each and every one of them. Yes. Um, and the next question is a clarification on how to practice vipassana using the six elements. I see. That is also a good question because this in vipassana you must all understand vipassana means seeing impermanence unsatisfactoriness and selflessness in the five aggregates form feeling perception thought and consciousness this is the aggregate there is no uh, nothing permanent everything is impermanent so uh, whether we see the elements or the aggregates, we must say both are the same because aggregates are made up of elements. And when we see impermanence, unsatisfactoriness in this, in this, uh, what you call element uh, discourses, element. Uh, discussions we mentioned, we see this is not mine, I am not this, this is not myself. Why we call this is not mine? Because it is always in the state of flux, changing, 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 never stop. Therefore, there is no way that one can make a claim that this is mine. If it is mine, you should be able to stop these changes and keep it in the way you like. It doesn't happen because it is changing constantly. Seeing this is vipassana practice. Then you see, I am not this. Of course, when there is no I, how can something be called I am? Because the elements, elements don't have I. Aggregates are made up of uh, these elements. When elements themselves don't have I, how can that which is made up of these elements have I? So therefore, uh, uh, there is no I. Similarly, when everything is impermanent and everything impermanent is unsatisfactory, when everything is unsatisfactory, how can we say this is my self? Self is something that there's a, there's a notion that people attribute to five aggregates in 20 different ways. These are notions. And this notion completely vanishes from our mind when we see uh, impermanence, unsatisfactoriness, and selflessness. That also practice is, is a vipassana practice. Seeing all these things, uh, seeing elements in the way I explained already, is vipassana practice. Seeing five aggregates in the way that I explained is vipassana practice. And therefore, all these details that we deal with in meditation is vipassana practice. Okay? Okay, well, the next question. Does consciousness, vijnana, have the ability to know the meaning of what it cognizes? Does it know that something is bad, good? Does it know names? Does vijnana, um, is, is it able to know the meaning of what it cognizes? Right. So, vijnana has... Uh knowing function vijanata vijanati ti vijnana is the definition of that word vijnana then there is another uh, state called sanya that is perception then panya wisdom all come from the root nya, nya, nya means to know. 
So sanya is the first, uh, vijnana is the first level, rudimentary level. Just knowing is vijnana. We see the color, then we know that it is uh, blue color, red color, and so forth. But uh, sanya is the designation and names we give to that particular color. Uh, Vijnana just see the color, but the, but Sanya, what do you call, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, Vijnana is just seeing, and then the Sanya is penetrating what we have seen to recognize the object as color, red color, blue color, yellow color, and so forth. That redness, blueness, all this comes out of our uh, sanya, sanya. Then, panya is the very tiny, minute elements of which this particular particular color is made. That is uh, that is far deeper uh, level of uh, uh, knowing cogn cognition, and therefore for the primary level of uh, awareness of anything is called uh, vijnana. Then san vijnana. Sanya and Panya. The example is a uh, very popularly popular example given in various places is uh, when you have a piece of gold, you show it to a child, child sees the color. That's all child knows about the gold, piece of gold. If you give it to a, a goldsmith, he knows even a little deeper of the gold, the, its its market value and what he can make out of this gold and so forth. But if you give it to a metallurgist, he would know all about gold, how long it should be in certain places, uh, underground, and... Uh, how to excavate it, how to extract it, and uh, uh, what are the composition, uh, how, what sort of elements are there, and all these minutest details that person knows. So that person's knowledge of gold is complete. Uh, goldsmith's knowledge is sort of medium. And your child's knowledge is very primary. Similarly, vijnana uh, is the primary level, sanya is the medium level, panya is the highest level. Okay. Yes, the, the next question is, um, when there is ill will that arises towards another person, uh, one would contemplate, uh, this is not me, this is not mine, and this is not myself. The person would like to know if it's also wise to contemplate these same three things uh, for the other person. Uh, not just oneself, but the other person as well. I think that's a good uh, question you also gave the answer. Yes, uh, this is uh, not uh, mine. This I am not. This is not myself. You can see that. You see, all the elements are working in you uh, to make you make the ill will arise in you. You have eyes. You have seen the object, then you have recognized it, and then you uh, have contact, you have feelings, you have perceptions, 
all these are working together. But all of them are impermanent, unsatisfactory, and selfless. None of them is, none of them you can say, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. Similarly, you can focus your mind on the other person. That person also made up of the same elements. That person also, uh, these elements does not belong to that person. And that person is not the elements. That person does not have a permanent self and so forth. This is uh, what you call uh, dependently er arisen. Dependently arisen phenomenon. That ill will does not arise by itself. It is not aditya samupad. Aditya samupad means something arising without causes and condition. Aditya samupad is something that arises through causes and condition. Ill will does not arise by itself without causes and condition. When you really mindfully think this way, your ill will completely that time will completely disappear from your mind. Completely disappear. Of course, when you are unmindful moment, this can arise again. But for that moment, this is a very good way of looking at it uh, to get rid of it. Okay. Yes, the, the next question, Bhante, is how to arise energy. The person notices that, um, you know, probably with the practice, mundane things become less important. And then this kind of brings um, a drop of, uh, of energy because um, some things seem less important. And, uh, you know, the person seems more calm. And so they feel like they have less energy and motivation. So how to arise energy? I mentioned, I gave this answer to this question several times. So I had to repeat it again. <laughs> I said, uh, you have to arrive to a spiritual urgency. A spiritual urgency, meaning you must think you have been born as a human being. You don't know how many trillions of times you were born as animals, ghosts, goblins, in health. You don't know. And be, to be born as a human being is a very, very, very difficult thing very rare thing. Don't have to waste this time, this moment. I must work hard to, to, to live this life and make use of it. Don't think that you will be reborn as a human being again. There is no guarantee. And therefore we take the advantage of this life not to just eat, drink, and do, you know, just enjoy, but to develop the mind. Develop the mind. Get rid of all this defi defilement. It is this, uh, uh, this Dhamma is not for the lazy person. Uh, this Dhamma is, uh, Buddha said, Aradha Virya Sayan Dhammo, Nayan Dhammo, Kusitas. This Dhamma is for those who, this Dhamma is for one who makes effort, not the one who is lazy. The more you lazy, you are preparing uh, your next life, very, uh, very painful next life. Uh, you don't know what sort of life you will be reborn next life. And therefore, you have to arouse a spiritual urgency. When you arouse a spiritual urgency, actually, you may uh, overcome your laziness, uh, arouse your energy. Uh, and to arouse energy, Buddha mentioned several times, you have to have Aramadhatu, uh, Nikkamadhatu, Parakkamadhatu, the elements of beginning, elements of continuing, elements of achievement. These kind of elements you have to arouse in yourself. Then your laziness will 
disappear. Whether you are sitting, standing, walking, lying down, no, whenever you are awake, you are awake. Try to think this way. And then, of course, if you have some physical problems, you have to consult a physician, expert of, in that area. But when you practice Dhamma, meditation and so forth, if you release it, you have to seek a spiritual uh, urgency. Arouse a spiritual urgency, the way I mentioned to you. I think uh, we can have, we can answer one more question, short question, because we are running out of time. Um, I'm not sure how short this will is a short question, but the answer may be long. How can one achieve goals in life while practicing to get rid of attachments? So how can we still achieve what we have to do in daily life and at the same time practice to not have attachments? In order not to have attachment, as we mentioned several times, you must see the danger of attachment. Attachment is uh, uh, craving, uh, tanna. Uh, tanna always has attachment, raga, raga. Raga has danger. You, uh, tanna arises because of enjoyment. Enjoyment always has danger. Why? Because it is not permanent. And you have to mindfully develop this mental state. When you develop this mental state, you naturally learn to get rid of your attachment, clinging, craving. You know, this is very, very uh, subtle and tricky and the most difficult thing to do but any most difficult things can become easy when you keep repeating it exactly the way the Buddha has taught. So getting Buddha Buddha mentioned that I can I don't tell you anything that you cannot do. I don't tell you anything that you cannot do. We can get rid of our desire, our craving, our clinging. You try to there are two types of desires. One desire is desire to perpetuate desire. Other desire is desire to become desireless. So develop the desire to desire less. That means letting go various things. And that is a very big subject. I just can to give you uh, within the short time. I can give you only short answer. This kind of brief answer. But... Uh, elaborate answer we need a lot of I mean long time I think uh, this uh, much is enough for today's uh, questions uh, now let us do some meditation today I don't have the bell now since I'm still in different location to uh, do this Zoom talk uh, so uh, later on, I think my friends will uh, help me to find Yes, we will ring the bell, don't they? Okay, very good. Okay, now let us do some meditation. Okay. Uh, now, may all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, may all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere. Neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm to another, as a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate for all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness, above, below, and all around, 
unobstructed, without hatred or resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down or when awake, one should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely dwelling here, not falling into erroneous views, which, but virtuous and endowed with vision, removing desire for sensual pleasures, one comes never again to birth in the womb. Now, friend, this is the time to practice what we have discussed so far. You ask very practical questions. I gave very practical answers. Now, try to match this. Think about elements. Six elements or 18 elements. 18 elements you can, you know very easily when you take one. For instance, I, visual objects, I consciousness are three elements. I elements, visual objects elements, and I consciousness element. There are three. You multiply, multiply all the six uh, senses with these three, then you have 18. Then you have 18 elements. Or sit, think of the six elements and think that this element is not mine. I am not this element. This element is not myself. This is very practical mindfulness insight vipassana meditation vipassana meditation okay i let you do this and uh, see how how successful you will be for now i stop here
Respiro. By means of this meritorious years, may I never join with the foolish. May I join always with the wise until the time I attain Nibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering. May the fear struck be free from fear. May the grieving be free from grief. So too may all beings be. From the highest realm of existence to the lowest, May all be in solution in these realms, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Oh, friends, I want to end this session with my regular metta wish. I want to wish all those who are suffering in hospitals, taken care of by very compassionate doctors and nurses and hospital staff, may they recover very quickly and have a chance to practice Dhamma meditation and liberate from samsaric suffering. All those doctors, nurses, and hospital staff who are taking care of them also find time to practice them, to continue their wonderful, marvelous service and attain liberation from samsaric suffering. And all those who are in various trouble spots, in war zones, in various places where they have all kind of poverty, discriminations, and so on, and may they find peace, happiness, solace, and comfort to practice meditation and liberate themselves from samsari, never to have the kind of suffering they have now. And others who have lost their loved ones and still in is grieving, May they be free from grief and have time to practice Dhamma, meditation, Vipassana meditation, and understand Dhamma, realize Dhamma, and liberate from samsaric suffering. May all those whose categories I have not mentioned be able to find time to practice Dhamma, and liberate themselves from suffering. And overall, everybody all over the universe find peace, happiness, and find time to practice Dhamma meditation without any hesitation and find peace and attain Nibbana, never to have suffering in samsara. With this metta wish, I like to end this session. Thank you very much for participating and encouraging me to continue the Zoom talks as much as I can. As long as I have energy, I will do this. And thank you very much. <coughs> Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you, Bhante. 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 Thank you